WASP-49b is one of the more interesting hot Jupiters we've come across so far. It's about the same mass as Saturn and has an average temperature of just over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 1,100 Celsius. It takes about 2.7 days to orbit its star, WASP-49a, which is pretty similar to the Sun in mass and radius. WASP-49a is itself part of a binary system with another star, which is annoyingly also named WASP-49b, on a large 400 AU orbit. Of course, none of this makes WASP-49b, the planet, not the star, particularly interesting. It's a good example of why exoplanets need proper names instead of confusing designations, but that's about it. But that all changed when we started studying it. The most interesting thing we found about WASP-49b was in 2017, when we realized that the whole planet was surrounded in a massive envelope of sodium gas. That on its own is pretty weird, as we haven't seen something like that in any other hot Jupiters. Vaporized iron and magnesium were also detected around the planet. Most interestingly, these gases likely aren't gravitationally bound to WASP-49b, because it's so close to the star the large orbits are difficult, but it could remain near the planet by magnetism. The presence of sodium and metallic gas has already set WASP-49b apart from other hot Jupiters. So, people immediately began trying to figure out what was going on here. What makes WASP-49b, which really shouldn't be anything but yet another gas giant that flew too close to its star, unique? As it turns out, the answer may be that WASP-49b isn't alone. Hot Jupiters have always been at the forefront of exoplanet research. The first planet found around a sun-like star was the iconic Dimidium, or 51 Pegasi b, which is a hot gas giant about half the mass of Jupiter. The title of the first exoplanet to be found using the transit method, the first exoplanet confirmed to have an atmosphere, and the first exoplanet to have that atmosphere studied and its mass accurately determined, all belong to the hot Jupiter HD 209458b, which has been unofficially nicknamed Osiris. But there's one thing people never expected hot Jupiters to have, large moons. Hot Jupiters all orbit extremely closely to their stars, some with orbital periods lasting from less than a week, like WASP-49b, to less than a day. Being this close to their stars, it's unlikely that any large moons would be in stable orbits for very long. Gravitational interactions with the star should fling any hot Jupiter moons away from their planet very quickly. But WASP-49b is challenging this. Not only is the planet shrouded in a sodium envelope, but the amount of sodium present periodically increases dramatically, an event people are calling a sodium boom. These sodium booms have been confirmed to not have anything to do with the planet's orbit, as they operate on completely independent timescales. Io is the most volcanically active world in the solar system, and the innermost major moon of Jupiter. Io's volcanic eruptions periodically send massive amounts of volcanic material, including sodium, into space, creating a notable effect on Jupiter's magnetic field. The sodium booms around WASP-49b, as well as the sodium envelope, can easily be explained by the presence of a volcanically active, Io-like moon around the planet. Based on the slight shifts observed in WASP-49b's orbit, this moon should have an orbital period around the planet lasting about 8 hours, which is close to WASP-49b's Roche limit, the area where large moons will be torn apart by their planet's gravity, but not inside it. This means that, if the sodium booms are in fact caused by the volcanic eruptions of an exo-Io, this moon would have a stable orbit. This hypothetical moon, which has begun to be called WASP-49b1, would be extremely close to the planet. An orbital period of 8 hours is extreme, even for moons. For comparison, Io takes about 42 hours to orbit Jupiter, and Saturn's innermost moon, Mimas, takes about 23 hours to orbit Saturn. But anything much further away from WASP-49b risks being dragged out of orbit by the star, so it makes sense WASP-49b1 would have such a short orbit. The size of WASP-49b1, assuming it is an exo-Io, is unknown, but it must be either significantly more volcanically active than Io, which is possible given its short orbit, or significantly smaller, allowing more material to escape the moon's smaller gravity into space. Nobody knows which option it is, but if I had to guess, I think that WASP-49b1 is a bit smaller than Io, and much more volcanically active. But that's just my opinion, and there's no evidence backing it up yet. However, how good are the chances that WASP-49b1 really is an exo-Io? If it is, this will be a monumental discovery that would change exoplanetary science forever, so we have to make sure it's a moon and not something else. What other options are there? From what I can tell, pretty much none. There aren't any other explanations that adequately explain the sodium booms, sodium envelope, and the slight shifts in WASP-49b's orbit. However, the moon may not necessarily be like Io. So far, there have been no published studies suggesting what I'm about to say, but few people I know have been suggesting it, and from what I can tell, it seems plausible. WASP-49b1 might not be a giant exo-Io, but might be much, much smaller, as in asteroid-sized. 
As it turns out, WASP-49b1 could just be a giant molten blob of lava in orbit around the planet, as in a fully liquefied lava asteroid. The sodium present around WASP-49b1 could be explained by a small asteroid moon slowly evaporating. As well as this, this version of WASP-49b1 would also make more sense orbit-wise. Io might have an orbital period of about 42 hours, but Jupiter has moons orbiting much closer in. Like the small asteroid moon Amalthea, which takes just 12 hours to orbit Jupiter, or Metis, which takes just 5. Smaller asteroid moons with orbit periods around 8 hours actually exist in the solar system, while major moons with such short orbits don't. So, if WASP-49b1 is a small asteroid, it would explain the short orbit. However, this is just speculation, and hasn't been officially put forth as a proposal yet. So, I personally think it's more likely that WASP-49b1 is an exo-IO, I just want to point out the fact that the asteroid possibility exists. If it is an exo-IO, then what exactly will the surface of this world be like? For that, we have to look at the hottest rocky planets we know of. WASP-49b1, assuming it is an exo-IO, is almost certainly rocky to some extent. It also likely has temperatures similar to the night side of the famous Janssen, or 55 Cancri E. Janssen itself is one of the most studied rocky exoplanets, so if there's any way we can guess it at the properties of WASP-49b1, it'll be by using what we know about Janssen and other hot rocky exoplanets like Tahe and Kuakua. So, we can say that WASP-49b1 is almost certainly covered in a global lava ocean, only interrupted by incredibly frequent, gigantic volcanic eruptions, like someone took Io and turned it up to 11. WASP-49b1, like every major moon in the solar system, is most likely tidally locked to its planet. This actually makes this world very unique. If WASP-49b1 is tidally locked to WASP-49b, it will experience a day-night cycle. Planets this close to their stars are almost inevitably going to be tidally locked, with one side permanently facing the star, and the other side in permanent night. This is seen on all three hot rocky planets I just mentioned, Janssen, Tahe, and Kuakua. But WASP-49b1 is different. It doesn't orbit a star. So, despite being so close to its star that it should be locked to it like any other rocky planet, the moon might actually experience a day-night cycle. This would make it the only known object extremely close to a star without a permanent day and night side, making it unparalleled in all of exoplanetary science. WASP-49b1 is actually very lucky to orbit WASP-49b, as it might give it something no other world that close to a star can ever experience, sunrises and sunsets. I've seen no possibility put forward that explains the presence of the sodium without needing a moon. WASP-49b1, unlike other exomoons, like the sad story of Kepler-1625b1, actually has a really good chance of existing. WASP-49b1 seems to be winning the race of the first confirmation of a moon outside the solar system, and, of course, it's around a hot Jupiter. This opens up the possibility for something most people thought was impossible, moon systems around thousands of hot Jupiters across the Milky Way. They were thought to be impossible, but if WASP-49b1 is confirmed, then the floodgates will open. There are already a few other tentative signs of exomoons around other hot Jupiters, including the famous HD 189733b, but none of them have nearly as much evidence as the potential moon around WASP-49b. If confirmed, WASP-49b1 will change everything we know about hot Jupiters. Once again, hot Jupiters will receive another exoplanet record, the first type planet to have confirmed exomoons. But hot Jupiter moons are only one type of moon. There's so much left to discover. And just like with exoplanets, as soon as one moon is discovered, it will pave the way for thousands more. Moons beyond the solar system have remained elusive for decades, but now we might have finally gotten our first sight of one, a hellish, hot, volcanically active world far more violent than even Io. Hopefully, WASP-49b1 is confirmed to exist soon, so we can study this world further. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets and space colonization.